We see the filter going over. Uh, Apollo 8, this is Houston. Uh, looks like we have too much light. Uh, the polarizing filter doesn't help much. Uh, go ahead and remove it again. We just got Roger, uh, we're passing over the uh, crater Borman. And there's Anders out there. Levels right picture. Uh, looks like we just have too much light. Picture, Bill, much better. All right, the right side of the camera is pointing retrograde. Much better picture, Bill. Much better. All right. The right side of the camera is pointing retrograde. Now we are now passing a beam of the crater Houston. And I'll shine the camera over there once for the folks in Texas. Roger. on this side is much, much better. Okay, I think. Okay, we'll leave it here. The wind just gives you an idea how bad our window is. Uh, Roger, this picture now is much better. I guess the light levels are decreasing now. Okay, we're coming up on the crater Collins. Uh, Roger, what crater is that that's just uh, going off? Okay. 
if he'll keep looking at the systems anyway. He just quit looking. That was a television transmission uh, the, from the moon, the first live transmission from the moon with a narrator on hand to describe uh, what was being seen. It came back to us beginning at uh, 7.30 this morning, a couple of hours ago. The transmission lasted uh, 10 or so minutes from 132 miles above the moon's surface. Those uh, craters that they were talking about, the names of them, uh, we have explained earlier, but for the late tuners, uh, these are sort of temporary code names uh, given by the American Space Program to identifiable features on the moon which have not been previously named and go under code numbers normally. Uh, they gave them names uh, honoring uh, the spacemen who are up there right now, Borman, Lovell, and Anders, and uh, some of the others in the space program, Mike Collins, uh, one of the astronauts who was scheduled to be the commander of this flight until uh, some minor surgery last summer knocked him out of the uh, flight training. Uh, also, they were named for uh, Jerry Carr, who was the uh, mission uh, uh, communicator uh, to the spacecraft this morning, is one of the 1966 class of uh, astronauts. Uh, eight of the names were four astronauts who have uh, departed, who have gone. Uh, the three who died in the Apollo 204 spacecraft fire, Virgil Grissom and Edward White and Roger Chafee. Four who died in airplane accidents, uh, training accidents, uh, or transport accidents, that is, in their own planes uh, during the course of their training. Theodore Freeman, Charles Bassett, Elliot C., and Clifton Williams, and the one who died in an automobile accident, Edward Gibbons, of the... Uh, American astronauts. The spacecraft is now, uh, just at this moment, it should be firing the engines for that nine second, the engine for that nine second burst, uh, slowing it down another 95 miles an hour uh, for a circular orbit of the moon. Then, in about 10 minutes from now, it will be emerging on the uh, trailing edge of the moon and uh, the signal should come through again from the spacecraft reporting on the firing of that engine. There is no contact with the spacecraft at this moment. Few men alive have participated in adventures as great as this Apollo 8 mission to the moon, of course. And we think of young Charles Lindbergh and his solo flight across the Atlantic in the spirit of St. Louis in 1927, and, and Sir Edmund Hillary's conquest of Mount Everest, and, uh, and Sir Francis Chichester's 28,000-mile voyage around the world alone in his uh, uh, Catch the Gypsy Moth. Those men are perhaps the only ones who can fully understand what the Apollo 8 astronauts uh, feel during this flight to the moon. <laughs> 